I'll take middle for diddle, please. Sorry? Isn't that what they say? Do they? Taking God, that's it. Middle for diddle, please. <laughs> Let's face it, Mum. You know as much about cricket as I do. I like this one. It's nice and light. Perhaps we ought to put it back. I bet I could hit a few boundaries with it. Oh, I'm going to have the sales assistant over here in a minute. It doesn't matter. I'm trying it out, aren't I? <laughs> yes. How does he know I'm not captain of Borsetshire ladies? <laughs> Probably by the way you're holding it. Yes, I think you should get him this one. Oh, we'll see what David says if he ever gets here. He shouldn't be long. He's just parking. Oh, I don't be more than an hour. I've got a meeting with Mr. Rodway at two. It's worked out quite well, actually. He had to come in anyway to get some lummy stuff. Mm, so I gather. When he said he was meeting you, well, I thought I'd give you the benefit of my advice, <laughs> too. We didn't see you and Mark over the weekend. No, well, we were very busy yesterday. Oh. Look, when I've bought it, shall we pop up to the coffee shop? Only if you've got time. They do some really nice open sandwiches. Is this what Mark asked for? Is it going to be a surprise? A surprise, I hope. It's a great idea. Well, he's always complaining about his old bat. Now, when he gets a duck, he won't have an excuse. Hmm. It's a busy week for birthdays, what with little pippers on Thursday. Yeah. So, why are you having the party on Wednesday? Didn't David tell you? They're popping up to Ruth's parents on the day. You will be able to come. Mm, it's worked out better, actually. I was planning a little do for Caroline on Thursday. A hen party? <laughs> Nothing too grand. I just thought I'd lay on a little supper party. That'll be nice. Well, Robin's having his bash. <laughs> Have you heard about it? A pancake race on top of the Mulvans. I could hardly believe it. They're mad, aren't they? At this time of the year, too. Good thing they'll have a doctor with them. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, Caroline's send-off's going to be a bit more sedate. I'm glad to hear it. But we are trying to keep it hush-hush, so not a word, eh, Mum? Gosh, all these secrets. I don't know if I can hold out. Well, try. <laughs> Honestly, the parking round here gets worse and worse. Hi, Sheila. Hello, David. Right. Now well, then, what is it you need to know about cricket bats? Or has Mum told you everything by now? Do you fancy another coffee, Elizabeth? Uh, no, thanks. It mustn't be too long, actually. No, right, well, I'll get my coat. No need to break your neck. Oh, it's OK, I'm ready. I'm just glad of the lift in. Oh, no, this is gross. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. Hello. You two off out? Yeah. How long are you going to be, Debbie? Oh, a couple of hours, that's all. I'm just popping in for a chat with Nelson. The car should be ready by then. Fine. Is there any coffee left? Mm, help yourself. Shan't be a minute, Elizabeth. OK. What sort of a drongo would send a card like that? It's all right, Kate. Look, it's got pigs on it. Oh, maybe he's trying to tell you something. Thanks, Dad. I love you too. I think they're quite sweet. Probably from John. That's the sort of pure art humour he'd go for. Yeah, how was Austria, Brian? Oh, very pleasant. As long as you didn't get tempted to do anything stupid like skiing. And did you? I'm afraid I did. It takes me a month to get over it these days. <laughs> it's not the skiing, it's the apres ski. <sighs> not anymore, it's not. You're meant to go away to get fit, but these two come back looking like wrecks. <laughs> it's pathetic. I don't know why they bother. Yeah, that'll do. Thanks, Kate. And Deb seems to have gone bananas over some sweet she met. Oh, yeah. I'd hardly say she went bananas. Still, she must be pretty desperate by now. I hear you're having the point to point at Lower Locks here, Elizabeth. Mm, I hope so. It was Debbie's idea. So I gather. It's nothing signed yet. Actually, we've got the contractors coming over tomorrow to have a look round the course. Mm, must be a nice little learner if you can swing it. Mm, that's what we thought, especially if we have them back every year. Quite. Right, I'm ready then. Oh, OK. Just pop out to phone Stefan, did you? Oh, grow up, Kate. It's OK. We all understand. Uh, I'll see you later then, Dad. Yes, all right. Can I come with you? Uh, no, not this time, Kate. You don't mind, do you, Elizabeth? Um, no. No, I'm not going round the town. I'm just popping into Nelson's, that's all. OK, I'll come to Nelson's. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. Yes, you can stay and give me a hand filling the creep feeders, Kate. Oh, great. I hope I don't die of excitement. Well, you can always get on with learning those lines of yours. See you then. Oh, by the way, Debs, did I tell you you're playing the prince in Linda's pantomime? Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Prince Charming. I volunteered you, and you have to kiss me, so lucky you. Yeah, nice bat, this. Precision instrument. Mm, I only hope Mark agrees with you. Oh, we'll be knocking him into Auntie Peggy's garden with this. We'll be slogger heads and all over again. Perhaps you'd better put it away. Oh, yeah, OK. We don't want them thinking you're about to rob the checker. Uh, <laughs> well, if this doesn't push up his batting average, nothing will. You've got me worried now. Have I? Why? What you said about a cricket bat being personal. Ah, well... Like buying a new suit, you said. Yeah, well, it is in a way, but I know he's going to like this one. It's his favourite mate for a start. Yeah, the most expensive. Yeah. Well, if it isn't right, they'll always change it. That's true. Underwood's are very good like that. Hey, don't do that. Give it to me instead. Oh, 
Oh, so it's all a ploy getting this make. Of course. Mm. I should have guessed. <laughs> Still, I must go. It's all right for you two. <laughs> You're joking. I've got vital equipment to buy. Exciting things like rubber rings and stomach tubes and teramycin spray. Oh, yes, I remember. Of course you do. And any time you fancy a shift in the lambing shed, you just let me know. Mm, don't wait by the phone. <laughs> I'll be about an hour, Mum. Are you going to be ready by then? I should think so. I'll see you outside the food hall, shall I? OK. 2.30? I'll be there. Right. Anyway, thanks for your help, David. Oh, it's a pleasure. Be worth it to see Mark scoring a few runs for a change. <laughs> Let's hope he does. Um, we'll see you at Pip's party on Wednesday, then, yeah? If not before. You certainly will. OK, bye. 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 I can't believe it's a year, can you, since Pip was born? No. All that excitement. It seems like only a few weeks ago. It does. Are you going to need any help on Wednesday? Not from you, dear. You've got enough on your plate. Oh, I don't mind, honestly. Don't be silly. You've got Mark's birthday and Caroline's send-off. Oh, I'll be all right. It's me who ought to be helping you, really. No, I'm fine. All I need is someone to lay the trap for Caroline. <laughs> and I've got a certain person in mind for that. That's the kind of thing John would do, just to wind me up. Well, why on earth would he do that? Because he's a sadist. Come on, let's set the rest of these bales off. He's jealous, really. Probably because we're better off. Oh, don't talk such claptrap. It's true. Now, hurry up. I want to get over and see how Sammy's getting on. I hope I'm getting paid for this. <sighs> he's hiring that five acres, you know, where we're going to put the willows. Am I getting paid for this, Dad? Well, don't be ridiculous. Look, here's Debbie. Let her do a bit for a change. Honestly, Kate. What's the matter? You really are a misery, aren't you? You've done nothing but complain all day. Well, it's meant to be a holiday, in case you've forgotten. Hi, you two. Hello, Debbie. Got things sorted out with Nelson? Yeah, more or less. He wants me to do three days a week. And it's regular, is it? Yep. Well, at least I can put you on the lambing rotor now. Yeah. And you'll be around to organise the off-the-road course? Uh, yes, should be. Don't forget to leave time for rehearsals. Yeah, very funny, Kate. I'm serious. Nelson's just asked me if I'm interested in a partnership. Has he now? Mm. See you, that will. You'll be with all the other old antiques. Oh, shut up, Kate. Would he be expecting you to put some capital in? Well, yes, he'll have to pay off Kenton. And where are you supposed to get it from? Borrow it. Well, I hope you're not planning to ask me. Oh, come on, Dad. I haven't even thought about it yet. There's a perfectly good career opportunity for you here. Yeah, yeah, I know. Next rehearsal's tomorrow night, OK? Oh, don't go on, Kate. You've got to come. I promised Linda. Well, you'll have to unpromise her, then. Oh, go on, Debs. If you don't do it, she's going to play the part herself. <laughs> well, I'm sure she'll be very good. No, oh, I can't get kissed by Linda. Just shut your eyes and think of your art. Come on, Kate. Let's take these bales over. Do I have to? Yes. Right, well, uh... I'll see you later, then. Oh, Shula phoned about half an hour ago. Oh, yeah? She wanted to know if you'd be in at tea time. I think she's calling in. Well, what about? you know? She wouldn't say. All very hush-hush, apparently. Oh. So when I get back, you can spill the beans. Hello, Elizabeth. Oh, hi, Mum. You're home early? Yeah. Just dump him down there, can you, David? Right. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah. What's this? You've been buying the entire food hall. I know, it looks like it, doesn't it? Well, this is going to be some party, I can see that. Oh, put the kettle on, dear. Yeah, sure. We're in dire need of a cup of tea, aren't we, David? Um, actually, I better not stop, Mum. Are you sure? Yeah, I must give Bert a hand with those lambing pens, otherwise I'll never be ready. Well, thanks for the lift. Any time. The unpacking can wait till I've had a sit down. Oh, that's better. Right, well, I'll see you then. Hey, I, I gather you're involved in this little plot tomorrow. What plot? Oh, you know what plot. The plot to kidnap Robin Stokes. Oh, I'm sorry, I've no idea what you're talking about. Oh, listen to him, Mum. He sounds almost plausible. Almost? <laughs> Shane Nigel can't keep a secret. Oh, I've got to go. He spilled the beans, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sung like a canary. We have ways of dealing with canaries. <laughs> You'll be halfway around the village by this time. There's no way you're going to trick Robin now. Well, we'll have to see, won't we? Bye. Bye. See you. I hope Robin's going to see the funny side of this. Why, well, his colleagues must think so. They're in on it, too. What, at the practice? Yeah. Apparently, they told him he's on call tomorrow, but they've actually got someone else. Poor Robin, it doesn't stand a chance. It doesn't look like it. Why are you back so early, dear? Oh, I've been with these clients in Borchester all day. It just didn't seem worth going back. It's only four o'clock. Mm, well, I wanted to keep out of the way. Nigel's taking Julia to that place this afternoon. What place? I told you, that place. Oh, yes. You won't say anything, will you? Come on, what do you take me for? I know. I should die if it got out. 
Seems to be more of a stigma going to a drying out clinic than being drunk all the time. It means admitting you've got a problem, that's why. Yeah, that's it, I suppose. Well, let's hope it helps anyway. Poor Julia. What's this, Mum? Mark's new cricket bat, present from Shula. Oh, right. Put it down beside the dresser, can you? Yeah, OK. She wants to leave it here for a while in case he stumbles on it accidentally. <laughs> more deception. <laughs> Afraid so. Well, there seems to be an awful lot of intrigue going on at the moment. Don't ask me why. Why do I feel I'm about to commit an act of treachery? Oh, Caroline, he'll enjoy it. It's going to be fun. Isn't that right, Richard? Well, I certainly hope so. So why are we having to kidnap him? Why don't you just invite him along? Oh, that'd be far too straightforward. I miss the chance of a bit of subterfuge. Quite. It's little boys' games, I'm afraid, Caroline. Yes, I think you're right. No, thanks. You're wrong there, Peggy. It's a tradition. So we're sending children up chimneys. Oh, really, Caroline? I only hope he doesn't hold this against me, that's all. You're not serious, Caroline. Of course she's not. Casting a shadow over what should have been our years of bliss. Oh, it's just her little joke. It's a bit late to have an attack of ethics. He'll be here any minute. Well, for goodness sake, don't tell him I had anything to do with it, all right? Well, you didn't. He's never going to believe that. What concerns me is, is it entirely safe? How do you mean, Peggy? Well, it's hardly the best time of year to go wandering about the hills, especially in the dark. We're talking about the Malvins, Mrs. Woolley, not the Swiss Alps. It doesn't matter. The weather can be very unpredictable. Well, we should be OK. We've got all the right gear. Oh, that's something. And let's not forget, they'll have a doctor with them. Yeah, not to mention the Wicked Wizard of the West. Who? The Wicked Wizard. I'll rustle up a few backpacking spells. Shh, here he is. OK, leave the talking to me. Oh, don't worry, I'm out of it. Hello. <laughs> What's all this? Oh, Tea break? Hello, oh, Robin. <laughs> Afternoon, Robin. Hello, darling. Hi. <laughs> Oh, what's the matter with everyone? You look as though you're planning the great train robbery. <laughs> Thanks for coming over. I think we'd better get off straight away. <laughs> yes, what is all this? I got a very garbled message from the surgery. Oh, it's an old boy called Ernie Cartwright. Lives in a farm caravan up in the Hassett Hills. I was over there this morning, soon to his ears. Ernie Cartwright? Yeah, he's got this old mongrel. It's obviously in a bad way, poor thing. I said I'd get you over to have a look at it. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Probably this, he's a bit of a recluse. I thought it might be better if I ran you over there. Fine, if you've got the time. Right. Well, we'll get over there before we start, then. Right. So it's uh, hello and goodbye, I'm afraid. Bye, Robin. Bye, Robin. Uh, perhaps I'll see you later, Caroline. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I was wondering if you were free for supper. Uh, I expect you're too busy. Yes, it might be difficult tonight. Oh, I don't mind. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Fine. Ro Robin, I don't want to rush you, but... Yep, uh, I'm with you. Bye. Bye, Robin. Oh, well, that seemed to go off all right. I feel awful. Nonsense. I'll have a great time. Only wish I was going myself. <laughs> I think your days of tramping the moors are over, Jack. You know, I used to love that sort of thing as a lad. St John's Sturchley Boys Brigade. Oh, didn't we have some fun? <laughs> well, you can have your fun in the pub afterwards. Oh, what time did you tell Higgs to come round with the car? Six o'clock. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, that's fine, Peggy. He's bound to think I was involved, you know. But you weren't. And he sees the funny side, that's all. Come on. Since when has this been the way to the Hasid Hills? Was well, that what I said? I must have got muddled. What I meant to say was the Malvins. The Malvins? Very nice this time of year. Oh. I've been set up, haven't I? <laughs> there isn't an old boy in a caravan. <laughs> Not one in need of your services. Oh, I knew it. As soon as I got that message, details from Richard Locke at Grey Gables. <laughs> what a prize idiot I am. I wouldn't put it quite like that. So... What am I in for, eh? Um, grass skiing and a leopard skin loin <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. Orienteering by torchlight? Um, floodlit maple dancing? I'll give you a clue. <laughs> what day is it? Uh, Shrove Tuesday. Pancake day. Exactly. Oh, no. I hope you're hungry. <laughs> There's no point in me saying I've got a prior engagement, I suppose. None whatsoever. Uh, what about the surgery? I'll have to give them a ring. Don't worry. It's all taken care of. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, Alistair. You're in trouble in the morning. Look, we've got the best part of an hour's drive to do, so you might as well sit back and relax. <laughs> OK. Uh, just tell me one thing, will you? What? Did Caroline know anything about this? Right, that's another one done. Sid? Yeah? Let's have that frying pan over here. OK. How much mixture we got left, Nigel? Uh, enough for one more, that's all. Well, that'll do. As soon as they get here, we can start. They better hurry up. I'm freezing. Yeah, hold it still, then. Whose idea was it, anyway, blooming pancake rice right up here? Richard's. 
Well, you ought to be reported to the European Court <laughs> for cruel and unusual forms of punishment. There you are, Sid. Go and practice your technique. It gets any colder, I'll stick to this blooming pan. Uh, right, let's have the rest of it then, Nigel. Oh, right. No, 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 I hang on. Maybe I'd better put some more fat in first. We meant to be eating these afterwards. It's compulsory, so watch you don't drop it. Because if we hadn't suffered enough. In you go then, Nigel. Well, I think they look delicious. There you are, Sid. An unsolicited endorsement. Yeah, well, you don't mind if it's a king. I used to be famous for my pancakes and the scouts. Hope they had public liability insurance. I pity no one remembered the lemon juice. Ah, here they are. Good old Richard, right on time. And he's actually got Robin with him. Amazing. <laughs> Poor bloke. At least I volunteered for it. Even if I wasn't thinking straight at the time. Uh, excuse me, is this the Cafe Royal? That's right. <laughs> Sorry about the lack of furniture. It's due to refurbishment. Welcome to the madhouse, Robin. <laughs> How are you doing, Mark? Nearly ready? Yeah, I'm on the last one now. Oh, great. So, uh, what is it? Twice around the car park and off to the pub? Uh, a bit further than that. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> this one. Uh, what is it? Oh, yes. Very stylish. I can't wear this. Oh, it's perfectly weatherproof. Don't look better. I'm wearing that jacket. You're wrapped around a tractor tire by the look of it. <laughs> Go on, put it on. <laughs> and there's a pair of trainers in the back. Oh. So... How far are we going? You know that place up there? The British camp. It's called... You're joking! That's <laughs> not far. Oh. You don't have to run. You can walk if you want. Take as long as you like. Oh, thanks. Just keep tossing the pancake. <laughs> the steward's on the path to see you do. What stewards? Uh, David's at the top, and there's Tony and Eddie at different points along the path. Uh, so they're not actually running? It's only mugs like us. You've got it. <laughs> OK, watch this, folks. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Well done. Yay! Yeah, well done. Just a little trick I picked up between briefs. Talent like that, you'll be working for John Paul. Uh, no, thanks. I think I'll keep the day job. Uh, so, um, when we make it to the top... Uh, if we make it. <laughs> we all head for the pub, do we? Oh, if only life was that simple. Wait, we've got to eat them first. Oh, yuck. Oh, sorry. No offence, Mark. OK. And if you survive that... Oh, sorry, Mark. Oh, no, no, no. Go on. Abuse me. I'm used to it. <laughs> we've then got a four-mile route march. Four miles? Oh, I don't believe this. Well, that's what we decided. You, who's this way? I thought you'd want a challenge. Yeah, uh, thanks, Richard. Come on, you'll be glad afterwards. I'll settle for being alive afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah, that's funny. I always thought Caroline was on my side. I think she's trying to tell me something. I hope he's not going to blame me. Why should he? It wasn't your idea. I could have tipped him off, though. He's probably having a lovely time. All boys together. <sighs> He's not really into that sort of thing. That's the trouble. It's only a bit of fun, I suppose. Robin's a man who looks for challenges inside himself. Yes, I know what you mean. And that's somewhere I can't really help him. You don't have to share his faith to understand it. No. I'm sure you're very supportive. Well, I try. But because he is such a solitary person, I sometimes wonder. Yes? Oh, nothing. I'm probably being stupid. If it's what I think you mean, well, it's perfectly natural. Is it? I felt exactly the same before Jack and I took the plunge. Honestly? Oh, I certainly did. <laughs> right. I'm off now, Peggy. Oh, Jack, you look really nice. Oh. Yes, you do, Mr Woolley. Very stylish. Oh, thanks very much. Now, you will be careful, won't you? Oh, Peggy, I'm only going to a pub. Well, go easy on those whiskies and give you a blood pressure. Do I have to? And don't be too late back. Oh, see how she goes on with me, Caroline? I suppose this is how you're going to be in a week's time. <laughs> you're very lucky to have someone who cares so much. Yes. Well said. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Bye, Peggy. Bye, Jack. Enjoy yourself. I'll do my best. Bye, Caroline. Bye, Mr. Woolley. Oh, uh, don't wait up for me, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with him, eh, Caroline? He's a one-off, all right. Oh, well, it's worked out for us, you see, despite my last-minute jitters. I don't think we could possibly be happier, Jack and I. I'm glad. And I'm sure it'll be the same for you and Robin. Hope so. You're like us, really, you two. You've both seen a bit of life. I don't know about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean you were a pair of oldies. But you're not teenagers, are you? No. Well, I'm sure you're going to be very happy. I won't if I sit here any longer. I've got a thousand and one things to do this evening. Oh, it's a busy time, all right. I'm off to Netherbourne Hall. Final run through with the caterer. It's all so exciting, isn't it? <laughs> That's one word for it. Well, you just make sure you enjoy it. You'll find it's all over so quickly. Yeah, little 
Daryl, you've soaked me. Oh, very good. Apex. Oh, shut up. Best show in Ambridge, your mum feeding the calves. We'll have to come here more often, won't we? If you're going to criticise, you can do them yourself. Oh, no, you're the expert. We've just come here to see a craftsman at work. Right, well, let's try again. Oh. Right, so far, I make it calves three, oh. Ruth nil. Isn't it time you went for your breakfast? You've had it, haven't we, Pip? Hmm? Boiled egg and soldiers, isn't it? In that case, you can go and keep an eye open for Robin. You've been. He hasn't. He has. He gave the old girl a shot of antibiotics and he was away by nine. That's very impressive. The morning after his stag night. Yeah. Well, I think he was trying to prove a point, actually. That vets can take the beer. He didn't have that much, actually. I bet he was the only one, then. Yeah, apart from me. You were driving. Well, it's true. He was a bit unsteady on his feet, but that wasn't a hangover. It was cramped. Honestly, what a bunch of idiots. Oh, thanks. Grown men careering over the hills in the dark. It's lucky you didn't get arrested. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was thinking that myself at one point. We were all crawling about in the undergrowth looking for a way marker by torchlight. <laughs> Hear that, Pip? Your dad's a nutcase. Yeah. Still, what can you expect when it's organised by someone who spends his weekends fighting the Battle of Age Beard? True. No way he was going to come up with anything ordinary. Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, hi, Mum. Hello, Jill. And how's the little birthday girl, eh? It's not her birthday. It's as far as I'm concerned, since I shan't be seeing her tomorrow. I hope this isn't going to set a precedent. Two-day birthdays every year. We shan't mind, shall we, Pip? <laughs> what time do you want us there this afternoon, Jill? Well, I've been telling people five o'clock, but if you two can get there a few minutes before... All right. We can drink a birthday toast. Do you hear that, David? I'm back by half past four, please. Yeah, well, I'll do my best, but I must help uh, finish those lambing pens. Oh, come on. It's your daughter's birthday party. Ruth, if we're going to drive up to Pruda tomorrow... Yeah, OK. I told Dad I'd have those pens ready before we went. Just get there as soon as you can, all right? Yeah, all right. Uh, do you want me to give you a hand later on? Only if you've got time. OK, I'll come as soon as I finish the calves. <laughs> be about 10 o'clock tonight at current rates of progress. I'd get on better if you weren't standing there criticising. Are you giving you trouble this morning? Oh, only this awkward beggar. There's nothing a little patience wouldn't cure. Well, hadn't you better get on with your lambing pens? Yeah, probably. Take no notice of him, Ruth. He was never any good at calf rearing himself. Oh, I know. OK, I admit it. Come on, Pip. Let's go and see what Grandad's up to, shall we? Bye, Pip. See you later. Bye-bye. Tell you what... Why don't I give you a hand here, then you can help me with the food? OK, Jill, you're on. Well, go on. Get your head down. You're supposed to keep your head down. Oh, I'm a... Yeah, you don't have to shove it in me back. And a rugby scrum. What am I meant to do with it, then? Cut it off, if you like. Only stop sticking it in me back. This is going to be great, isn't it? <coughs> Who's that? Morning. Get me over here, yeah, yeah, let's, let's get out of this thing. <laughs> what are you doing creeping around here, eh? I'm not creeping round anywhere. Oh, oh, that's better. I thought it was one of your cows got out, only I, I couldn't quite make out the breed. Yeah, very funny. It looks something like a dairy shorthorn, I'd say, with a bit of Guernsey thrown in. It's for the pantomime. Ah. We were trying it on. Doesn't look much of a milker. Oh, it'll milk all right. Here, you want to see how it works? Uh, no, no, thanks. No, I'll try and contain myself till rehearsals. What are you doing at rehearsals? Oh, I'm in it. Haven't you heard? I'm supposed to be playing the prince. Typical. Mm, it didn't take them long, then. I end up being the old rich shoe. I can see that. It didn't take who long, Eddie? Yeah, Richard Locke and your sister. To con you into being in it. Uh, me and Eddie has to be the blooming cow. It's ours, you see. Well, what you're moaning about? You want to try being the back off? What, with my back? Uh, Look, Eddie, I haven't been conned into anything. Uh, good. So I won't have to give old Lock Pocket a fiver, then. A fiver? What for? We had a little bet on. He reckoned he could talk you into being in it, and I said he couldn't. Is this true? Yeah, you're honest. And your kid's sister was, isn't it, too? Oh, uh, was she? <laughs> oh, dear. Perhaps you weren't going to be Prince Charming after all. Well, we'll see. I should have played that part myself. But you? Prince Charming? Why not? Got a good singing voice. You stick to playing the back end of a cow. You got a gift for that. You can have the part as far as I'm concerned, Eddie. Changed your mind, have you? Maybe. Ah, uh, won't make much difference to me, any road. There's no way Linda Snell's gonna let me do it. She's got some sense, huh? It's who she likes and who she don't like. Talent don't come into it. Still, I didn't come round to talk about the pantomime. So what did you come for? Uh, Nelson Gabriel asked me to pop in, actually. He said you had um, an old chest you wanted valued. Oh, that. Hmm. Yeah, by somebody who knows something about it. Well, I know a bit. An old thing. Oh, come on, then. Now you're here. 
Yeah, well, I've got Everest to feed. Oh, uh, before you go, how did you get on at Robin Stag Night? Or uh, aren't women allowed to know? At one point, they walked into a bog in the pitch black. The silly chumps. <laughs> Could have been quite dangerous. I suppose they all went off and drank gallons of beer afterwards. Oh, David didn't. He was driving the minibus. Was sensible anyway. There we are. How do you manage to get your pastry so thin? <laughs> Mine always falls to bits. Too much fat, I expect. Just me, I think. Haven't got the fingers for it. Don't be silly. It's true, Jill. My hands were made for grease and tractor wheels. <laughs> well, let's see what you like at filling these. If I cut them out, can you put a dollop of the mixture on? Oh, I should be able to cope with that. Thanks. So, that's Robin's do out of the way. And tomorrow it's Caroline's turn. Yep. Shame you won't be there. Sure the planning quite is spread. Always the way, isn't it? Everything comes at once. They've been friends a long time, those two. That's why Shula wanted to do something special. Be quite an emotional occasion. I think it probably will. Then there's the thing about babies. How do you mean? Well, let's face it. If Caroline and Robin do want children, they won't have to hang about. Mm, they can't, really. And if she does get pregnant fairly quickly... Well, I'm wondering how it'll affect Shula. Yeah, I see what you mean. She hasn't said anything to you, I suppose, about starting the treatment again. Not a thing. She hasn't to me, either. Perhaps she's decided not to put herself through it again. Oh, no. I've got pastry all over my hands. Well, I can't go either. All right. Come in. Morning. Hello, Linda. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. You've rather caught us on the harp. Oh, well, look, uh, don't let me interrupt. You carry on. Thanks. Come and sit down. But I won't stay. It's Phil I was looking for. Is he about? Over at Holletry, I'm afraid. She'll be back by lunchtime. I see. I was going to ask him a favour. I'm looking for someone to play the piano at tonight's rehearsal. Oh, I see. Marjorie's oh. temporarily indisposed. It would only be for the one night. Well, I can tell you now you won't be able to. It's Philippa's birthday party. Ah. We're having a little family gathering, aren't we, Ruth? Yeah. I don't think Phil would want to miss it. No, of course not. Sorry. Never mind. I'll just have to think again. Perhaps we'll manage without music this time. How's it going, anyway? Well, not too bad. The usual petty jealousies, of course, but that's inevitable with amateurs. Oh, dear. Uh, now then, while I'm here, I wonder whether you've given any thought to our trip to Merriwell, either of you? I can't say I have. Well, shame on you, Ruth. What about you, Jill? can't imagine we'll have time, not in the middle of silaging. Well, do please think about it. It's going to be wonderful, I can promise you that. What do you mean, it ain't worth much? Solid oak, that is. Well, um, let's face it, it has seen better days. Well, of course it has. We all have. It's old, that's why. Well, yeah. 17th but... century. That's what makes it so valuable. I wouldn't say it was quite as old as that. Oh, and you're an expert. We all know that. Well, the fastenings definitely aren't that old. My grandfather, that's who it belonged to, and his grandfather before him. And, well, there's a lot of woodwork. Oh, uh, all right. If you weren't interested, I, I'd find somebody else who is. Well, that's up to you. Woodworm, she says. How much does it cost to get rid of woodworm? Shall I ask Nelson to have a look? Well, I wouldn't want to put you to any trouble. I can't imagine he'll say anything different. No, I bet he won't. Take it off my hands for a fiver, then flog it for hundreds. It's your game, isn't it? Well, if that's how you feel. Living antique dealers. We should have known better. Joe? Oh, what's that? What? The, um, the jug thing. Oh, that uh, ain't nothing. I used to put my shaving stuff in it. Do, do you mind if I have a look? <laughs> no, I know you don't know what you're talking about. You, you don't think it's worth very much? Well, not your chest. Where's it from, do you know? Oh, uh, that one my grandfather is too. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm sure how old it is. Clary used to put flowers in it. Well, she don't bother these days. I see. Wow, she's got all them cut glass vases. I might look it up, Joe. Find out what it is. Uh, if it's worth ten quid, you give me sixpence, I suppose. I don't work like that. You're the only dealer that don't, then. OK, what's the score? Well, on the chest. Don't ask. Uh, I don't think it's worth a great deal, Eddie. Yeah, so you, sir. Uh, Blumen Nelson, Gabriel, I don't know why we bothered. Yeah, wasted time. If he's only going to send the office, girl. Oh, come off it, Joe. If I wanted to hear a lot of nonsense, I'd have had Martha Woodfield over here and got her ripping. Where do you want this, then, Mum? On the side table, I think. Right. This looks great. You always wear hot stuff at trifles, weren't you? Thanks, David. Right. Ruth made it. 
Dude, she's amazing. See what I'm up against, Jim. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, love. It's just it's so different from the one you did at Christmas. Well, some of us learn from our mistakes, you know. Yeah, of course. Right, if you could slice up the French bread, Ruth. OK. I think we're practically there. Ah, oh, wine glasses. And all this is in your honour, young lady. I hope you appreciate that. <laughs> she's got more important things to think about. Haven't you, Pip? Yeah, like how to clock up the miles in your new tractor, eh? It's <laughs> great, isn't it? She's certainly taken to it. Yeah, it's because it smells like custard. Custard? Yeah. How do you reckon they do that? Well, dip it in trifle, I expect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine, if they could do that with grown-ups tractors, what a selling point. You're a nutter, David Archer. Oh, I'd be a big crowd puller at the Smithfield show. <laughs> a complete Wouldn't nutter. Me? There we are. Oh, it looks wonderful, Jill. Yeah, it's a great spread, Mum. Thank you. Now, why don't we have a sherry before everyone arrives? Good idea. Drink a toast to the birthday girl. Yeah. How about you, David? Oh, uh, have a lager, please. I don't know what on earth Phil's doing up there. They'll be here soon. How many are we expecting? About a dozen. Jack and Peggy will be along later. <laughs> They've been to Chester for the day. All oh, right. I did ask Robin to pop in if he's got a moment. Oh, that's a nice thought. Well, he was at the christening. Yeah, he's probably still suffering from yesterday, poor old Robin. Yes. How did he take it? Well, he enjoyed it in the end, but I think it came as a bit of a shock. Who needs friends like that, eh? <laughs> there we are. Thanks, Jill. David? Oh, thanks, Mum. Yeah, I reckon Caroline was in for a hard time when he caught up with her. Well, it wasn't her fault. No, well, guilt by association, I'm afraid. <laughs> right. Here's the little Pippa. Yeah. Good old Pipsqueak. Many happy returns of the day. Tomorrow. Good Lord. What's all this? Oh, I'm trying to get a few things done for tonight. This has to be some sort of record. Cooking at eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, I just thought I'd get the dips made. Do you want some coffee? Oh, please. The kettle's boiled. Right. I'll make some toast in a minute. No, don't bother on my account. I haven't got time this morning. Oh, Mark. Got someone coming in first thing. She wants an injunction. Domestic violence. Oh, you never mentioned it last night. Let's try not to think about it. It's fairly nasty. Oh, poor you. Oh, it's all part of the job. Hmm. Hmm, that's quite nice. So, you all set for tonight? Yeah, I think so. Debbie's doing the dirty deed. Oh, yes. She's taking Caroline out for a ride. And instead of going back to Grey Gables afterwards, they'll end up here. Poor Caroline. What do you mean, poor Caroline? She's going to have a great time, unlike Robin. He enjoyed himself in the end. Well, we don't see the need to punish ourselves first. We're just going to have a nice supper with lots of wine. Oh, sounds good to me. There we are. Oh, thanks, love. And Nigel's organised an entertainment afterwards. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not that sort of entertainment. Good. No, we're going to have a racing night, on-course betting and everything, all on the video. Sounds fun. Nigel's got all the stuff. They use it for their corporate dues. Well, mind you, don't lose your shirt. <laughs> and the best part of the whole evening is we're having this handsome waiter who's going to be charming and efficient and do all the washing up afterwards. Uh, yeah. And if he's very good, I might even let him stay the night. Uh, look, I'm sorry, but there's a chance I could be a bit late. You're not serious. It's possible, I'm afraid. But I told you about this party ages ago. You promised. Yeah, I know. All the other nights you've been late, I haven't said a word. And the one night I ask you to be yeah, here... I can't help it, my love. You know what these cases are like. You can't do shit deal with it. Uh, not today, I'm afraid. OK, work's got to come first. We all know that. I'll just have to find someone else, won't I? I'm, I'm going to have to go. You haven't drunk your coffee? I'll get some in the office. OK, it's up to you. Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll see you tonight. I'll, I'll do my best to get back, all right? No, don't put yourself out of my car. Shula, please. Go on, then, if you're going. Yeah, OK. Oh, just a minute. I'm sorry. <sighs> it's all right. I'm disappointed, that's all. So am I. Don't worry about tonight. We'll manage. I just hope your day isn't too awful. This is the spot, Lizzie. Right. They're suggesting we put the car park on the left. Uh -huh. And everything else on the other side of the fence, the paddock and, uh, well, the weighing tent, that sort of thing. Isn't it a bit close to Uncle Cedric's folly? Uncle Cedric will have to put up with it. He's had things his own way for 160 years. <laughs> it's true. He'll probably appreciate being so close to the beer tent. Well, they're the experts, these people. Quite. And they reckon the site's going to be OK? They seem to think it's ideal. Level, free draining, and plenty of parking space. Great. They said they'd ring and confirm by the end of the week. I wonder what Julia's going to say. She'll be delighted. A great fan of point-to-points is, Mummy. 
apart from what she calls the Cortina element. <laughs> Have you told her? No, oh, I didn't get a chance last night. She was too busy telling me about her therapy group. She started already, then? Yes, but um, hmm, I wish she wasn't so antagonistic. I can't help feeling it's the wrong spirit to go on about them being pathetic wrecks. It's her way of surviving, I expect. It's that stubborn pride again, Lizzie. How is she going to make any progress if she won't admit she's the same as they are? Yeah. I really thought she was asking for help last week. She was, I'm sure. Not on the phone last night. It was the old mummy again, red in tooth and claw. Well, a defensive reaction, I expect. Must seem quite hostile to start with. I suppose so. You know, maybe when she starts to trust them more. Let's hope you're right, Lizzie. Anyway, they must have seen it all before. What, somebody like Mummy? Well, no, maybe not quite like your mother. <laughs> no, I bet they haven't. Ah, we've got a visitor. I bet I know what this is about. Caroline's hen party? Right in one. Are you going? Yeah, of course. Have to give her a decent send-off. <laughs> Absolutely. But unlike you lot, we intend to enjoy ourselves. We enjoyed ourselves too. Once we'd anaesthetised the pain. <laughs> Honestly. Nothing like adventure for giving you a thirst. It's like sneaking out to the pub after prep. One day you'll all grow up. I don't think that's very likely. What's this? Staff outing? Yeah, we're just sizing up the old point-to-point -point course. Hey, you must try it when it's ready. Oh, I'd love to. Any time, you know that. Thanks. I thought I'd just make sure that you were still okay for tonight. Don't worry, Shula. I'll be there. Oh, good. I've dusted off the trilby and brushed down the houndstooth check. <laughs> you think he's joking, don't you? On course betting starts 8.30 sharp. First race, 8.40. Honest Nige, the working man's friend. It's a hen party. Yes. All well-known credit cards accepted. Oh, we shall be betting with matchsticks. As long as they're backed by banker's card. <laughs> Great. I'm looking forward to it. So am I. Um, I don't suppose there's any chance of you getting there a bit early, Elizabeth. Mm, don't see why not. Do you need some help? Yeah, I'm afraid my number one assistant may be going AWOL. So another pair of hands would be terrific. So, Eddie Grant is the new Prince Charming. Yep. Well, that's an interesting piece of casting. <laughs> what? Well, oh, oh, steady, boy. Um, I don't think he gave Linda much choice. You think she was really trying to pull a fast one? Yeah, it looks like it. OK, she put in a few little touches of her own, but basically it was someone else's script. And Eddie found her out? Yep. He found the original script in the library whilst he was getting a book for William. Crafty old Linda. <laughs> she must have felt very guilty. She'd never have given in the part otherwise. Be sure your sins will find you out. Yeah, too true. <laughs> oh, dandy. Still, can't you? Oh, Auntie Chris said he'd be a bit headstrong. Oh, she was right. Look, hang on. I'll hold him while you put the saddle on. Mm, might be an idea. Come on, Tolly. Come on. Over here. I don't know what I'm going out for anyway. I must be absolutely mad. I'm getting married in two days' time. Oh, it'll do you good to have a break from it. I have to spend this evening sorting out the flowers as a penance. Now then, Dandy, are you going to quieten down for us, eh? Yeah, of course you are. There we are. Yeah, you're going for a good gallop. That's what you really want, isn't it? It's what he's going to get, whether he wants it or not. Oh, she's the boss, old chap. So, you've handed over the star part to Eddie, then? Well. Oh, he's a natural, isn't he? Prince Charming. Oh, yes, absolutely. Anyway, there's no way I'm playing along with Richard's little games. He really had a bet on with Eddie. <laughs> Subtle, isn't it? Very. So, having let Linda squirm for a minute, I stood down gracefully in favour of a superior talent. <laughs> and you're not playing anything now? Nope. Uh, even though she dangled another tasty roll in front of me, somehow I managed to resist it. What was that? Eddie's replacement in the pantomime cow. Oh, tempting. <laughs> Back end or front? Back end. Joe is at the front. A tough decision. I can see that. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you know, with the right exposure, I could have taken that role all the way to Broadway. <laughs> Fame isn't everything. Exactly. I said I'd help backstage instead. Very wise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best part was telling Kate it was Eddie who was going to be kissing her. <laughs> yeah, for a minute, I thought she'd resign as well. She didn't, though. What? Missed the chance to show off to the entire village. Ooh, not our Kate. Right, then. You can just hold on to him when I get on board. Right. Steady, old chap. There we are. Now, then, let's find out who's really in charge, shall we? I say, that's rather splendid. You made it. I did. Did you really? Oh, great. Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> no, no, you're a very artistic person, Shula. We've always said that, haven't we, Lizzie? Definitely. It's just that there aren't any spelling mistakes. I know how to spell Caroline, thanks very much. No, I was thinking of luck. <laughs> 
Come on, grab the other end, you. <laughs> right. Now stand on that chair and stick it in the corner. And you get blowing on those balloons, Nigel. I'm nearly out of puff. <laughs> Don't be a wimp. We need three or four round the light. OK. Right in the corner, please, Elizabeth. It is right in the corner. <laughs> Good. Seriously, it's a brilliant banner. It must have taken ages. Yes, it did. Hey, all the detail. Even the little nail holes in the horseshoes. Have you got it, your end? Yep. Right, let's do this end now. It's superb, Sheila. Only the best for Caroline. We've been friends a long time. Let's hope she gets here, then. She'd better. Debbie's on a three-line whip. <sighs> it's dangerous agreeing to anything round here. You never know where you're going to end up. <laughs> there. How does that look? It's great. Yeah, not bad, is it? Wonderful. Good. Well, that's just about it, then. Apart from the balloons. <laughs> You're doing a grand job, Nigel. A grand job. Oh, thanks. Um, could I ask you another small favour, Nigel? Ask away. Well, if Mark's not back by the time people start arriving, would you mind taking over buckling duties, just temporarily? Of course. Oh, you're a star. I don't think it will be on for me to serve drinks. Not on an occasion like this. Absolutely not. At a hen party. I'm awfully bad form. <laughs> if we do call on you, would you mind slipping Mark's DJ on? No need. I've got my own in the car. Oh, brilliant. You didn't really think I was going to do the show in a Trilby and Bookie suit? Um, <laughs> no, of course not. Hey, let's have a preview race, shall we? Oh, yes. Sorry, it can't be done. Don't be mean, Nigel. Yeah, I want to see how it works. First race is 8.40. We'll run it twice, then. But you'll know the result. Oh, come on, just show us the first couple of furlongs. Oh, OK. But you two are barred from betting on the first race, all right? Oh, yes, all right. Mm. I've got the table set up. So, here we go for the first race. There they are. Well, those are the runners. Ooh. Oh, excuse me. So which one do you fancy? Um, oh, I think I'll go number Darling. four. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, the black one. Mm. No, not yet. Well, he not looks in good nick. I said. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah. OK, darling. My money's on him. Oh, right, we'll see you later then. I'll fast forward through this bit. See you later then, darling. Mm. Bye. Well, you're off the hook, Nigel. He's on his way home, is he? Yeah, that was him on the car phone. Good. Now all well, we've got to hope is Debbie manages to get Caroline here. Hey, Sheila, I've got my horse for the first race. He's gorgeous. I thought we weren't betting on the first race. Oh, stop it then, Nigel. How's that for timing? Right on the starting line. <laughs> That's mine, the black one. Oh, yes. Down starters orders and uh, they're off. Come on, number four. Steady there, boy. Thank you. He's a lot quieter now. Yeah, I think we've tired him out. <laughs> tired me out, all right. <clears throat> what I need now is a long, hot bath. Oh, um, actually, I wondered if you fancied a drink afterwards. Yes, all right. Quick one. Great. It mustn't be long. I've got to have another go at the seating plan tonight for the reception. Uh, can we call it Shoeless first? She might like to join us. Fine. I haven't seen her for ages. Yeah. Uh, I think she wants to ask you about Robin's little romp on the Malvern. <laughs> he gave me a hard time about that. Why? It wasn't your doing. To hear him, you think I'd masterminded the whole thing. Oh, I heard they had a great time. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Even Robin. Even if it isn't really his thing. Well, out with the lads, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, um, we'd better go single file along here. Good idea. Yeah, there's a, a nasty bend coming up. Come on, Tolly. That's it. Oh, hello, Alan. It's Mark Hebden. Yeah. Uh, look, did you manage to serve that injunction all right? Ah, oh, great. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was in quite a state, poor woman. Yeah. Y yeah, I know. Well, these cases are always difficult. That's the thing about Robin. He's got this way of getting his point across without making you feel put down. Sorry. Robin's technique of persuasion. It's very effective. Must come from his theological no, training. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Never mind. We were lucky with this one. The judge saw us at half past two. You can never tell, though. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sometimes you can end up sitting there all day. Oh, my God, stupid idiot. <laughs> better phone the office. Mr. Pemberton's coming in early. All right. Dad can do that. Yes, you can. I reckon you wouldn't have felt anything. The sergeant says you'd be unconscious the second it hit the tree. Yes. 
It's funny, you know, that there was hardly a scratch on his face. You couldn't even see the injury. Must be the way they put his head. Oh, Shola. I didn't think I was going to be able to look. All the way along the corridor, I was thinking, I can't go through with this. And the funny thing is, it wasn't Mark at all. Not the real Mark, I mean. It was... <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, Mum. Let's see. You cried, my darling. No, no, I mustn't. Why have I not? I mustn't, that's all. You can, you know. No, I'm all right, honestly. Look, uh, shall I make us all a cup of tea? Not for me, thanks, Dad. You have one, then. Yeah, well, I think I will. Perhaps I'll have a bath. Whatever you want, dear. Yes. Uh, use Elizabeth if you want to. Shall I come up and run it for you? Uh, where is Elizabeth? Well, she went in early this morning. Did you want to talk to her? No, it's all right. She'll be tired. She was up half the night with me. There's plenty of clean towels in the airing cupboard. OK, thanks. Just to hold her and take all the pain away. Yes, I know. I really don't think I can bear it, seeing her hurting so much. Look, we have to bear it, Jill. We mustn't let her down. She doesn't need us. I'm just wondering if I, if I ought to phone David. They'll be on their way back soon. I mean, is it kinder to prepare them for it now? Or should we let them drive down here without this on their minds? I don't know. I really don't. No, neither do I. All right, I'll go. Thanks. Uh, perhaps I'd better ring. It's going to be a shock arriving home to this. Oh, Mr Archer. Oh, Richard, come in. Hello, Richard. Mrs Archer, look, um... I know words are totally inadequate, but I really am so sorry. Thanks. Look, I... I was just going to make a cup of tea. I don't know if you've got time. Oh, yes, please, uh, my lord. Right. Thanks. Have you had any news from the hospital about Caroline? Not yet, I'm afraid. Poor Debbie. What on earth must she be feeling this morning? How could I be so stupid? I'm, I keep asking myself that over and over again. You mustn't blame yourself. It wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. I took Caroline into going for that ride. I arranged for her to, to, to borrow the horse. Auntie Chris had told me he was dodgy. Oh, Caroline's an experienced horse. Yeah, she wanted to go in at half past four. Did I tell you that? I persuaded her to come for another gallop on Hayden Barrow. All because of some ridiculous game to keep her out of the way. Darling, don't... If we keep... packed up when she'd said, we'd have been coming along there in the daylight. Oh, it was hardly dark. Well, it, it wasn't far off. And who's to say it wouldn't have happened anyway? We didn't have to stay out all that time. That's a stupid thing. We could have gone for a cup of tea or something. That it was time to go to Shuler's and... And poor Mark... Oh, oh, Debbie, you mustn't. It is. It's all my fault, Mum. It's not your fault, darling. It's it's that criminal who overtook Mark on the, on the blind bend. That's whose fault it was. Yeah, I couldn't even do that right, could I? I couldn't even tell the police the colour of the car, let alone the number plate. I'm not surprised. It, it all happened so quickly. I, I managed to get the horse. It, it was going to run away, and Caroline was lying in the road. Oh, it's a miracle Mark didn't hit her. Yeah, he, he, he put it in a skid. He was very brave. Yeah, and, and what was I? <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. You... Forget it, you know. Hearing, hearing that awful crash, it made me feel sick. Oh, Debbie. And then seeing him with the blood run, running down the side of his head all, all over that stupid tower I used to take the mickey out of. Darling, don't. I knew, I knew he was dead straight away. I knew that. I didn't need anyone to tell me. I spoke to the casualty officer before I came out. And he said the signs were hopeful. Oh, good. She's got a hairline skull fracture, but there doesn't seem to be any bleeding into the brain. So how long will she be unconscious? Impossible to say. They'll keep her sedated for a couple of days. I'm sorry. I can't go and see her. Not yet. Well, no one expects you to. I want her to be okay. Really, I do. But... Yeah? Oh, nothing. You're thinking, why Mark and not her? Is that it? 
perhaps. Oh, no, not really. Shula, I'm so sorry. It isn't fair, though, is it? It's all so arbitrary. As if someone's sitting up there throwing a dice. Yes, I know. That's, that's how it seems. I just want someone to tell me why, that's all. Well, that's something I can't do, I'm afraid. <laughs> Useless, aren't I? No. You've been very kind. Look, I'm going to keep a regular check on you for quite a long time. And meanwhile, if there's anything I can do, Shula, you've only got to ask. I know. Thanks. Now, why don't you go and lie down for an hour or so? Oh, no. No, I'll be going out in a minute. There's someone I want to see. Have you seen my gloves? Aren't they in your pocket? Um, no, I think I might have put them in the drawer. Oh, hang on, I'll have a look. I don't suppose I managed to put a jinx on a field of ewes. Oh, Debbie. Our losses didn't seem to be any higher than usual, even with me in charge. But you can't go on punishing yourself. Can't I? You're not God, you know. Are they in there? Yes, yes. Here they are. Thanks. Well, answer that, can you? It says probably Mum. Shula. Hello. Can I have a quick word? Uh, of course. Um, come in. Thanks. Shula. There's nothing I can say. Except we're almost dreadfully sorry. Thanks. Here, look. look sit yourself down. Can I get you a drink of anything? Uh, no, it's all right. Thanks, Jennifer. I, I just wanted to ask Debbie something. Uh, okay. Look, Debs, I, I know this must be horrible for you. You've probably been through it with the police and everything, but well, could you stand telling it again? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Debbie's feeling awful about it, aren't you, Debbie? Uh, Mum, uh, could we have a talk in private, please? Oh, yes, yeah, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry to put you through this again, but I need to know. Yes. I gather you'd been up on Hayden Barrow. Yeah, that's right, yeah. We, we were walking back along the road. Y you know the bend that just before the, the long straight bit? Yeah, it's OK. I know where it happened. Well, we were in single file, Caroline in front, and uh, this car comes belting round the bend and halfway across the road. Caroline's horse goes bananas and, and, and throws her into the road. And then... Well, then Mark comes round the bend and he sees her lying there right in front of him. So he... Well, he... He what? He swerves and... and skids and... Yes. Well, that... That's how it hit the tree. I see. Honestly, Sheila, I, I don't think... It... I mean, he did. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm... I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Why don't you go home and have a bit of a rest? No, I don't think so. I'll give you a ring if anything happens. I'd rather stay for the moment. But thanks. You're not going to help her by cracking up yourself. I don't think that's very likely. Who is that in there? Her parents? Yes. They got her about half an hour ago. They're so upset. Isn't this the time to give yourself a break? Well, at least go and get something to eat. Yeah, I will soon. I'll make sure you do. Oh, why has he gone in there? That's the consultant. Yeah, I, I know him. Well, there must be something wrong. It could be just routine. It's intensive care, don't forget. <sighs> yeah. Relax. All right? Well, I'll soon tell you if there's any change. How long she'd like it to stay like this? Any idea? Well, it's very hard to say. There was nothing on the CAT scan. No bleeding or anything. They say her neural function's all right. Oh, that's right. So why isn't she coming round? Sometimes it just takes a long time. She will come round, though. Eventually. Oh, I see no reason why not. Not quite the same as yes, is it? Look, 
Is there anything I can do to help, you know, uh, over the arrangements? The unarrangements. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty well taken care of. I've given Marjorie a list of numbers. She's doing her best to contact everybody. Right. Except for the boys, of course. I, I gave them a ring first thing this morning. They wanted to come straight up here. Yes, I bet. And Marjorie's been an absolute brick. So have Peggy and Jack come to that. Well, as long as you've got everything covered. Oh, I think so. But thanks for the offer. Hello, dear. We were having a tidy up. I hope you don't mind. Oh, you don't need to. Hello, Jill. Hello, Debbie. You as well? Yes. She wanted to come. Well, I can clear up. You don't have to bother. Oh, it's no bother. Uh, why don't you go back to Brookfield and leave it to us? Oh, I don't know what we're going to do with all this food. Do you want to take some salads back, Debbie? Uh, uh, yes, thanks. Oh, smells good, this casserole. It looks very nice. I suppose I could give it to David and Ruth. Save them having to cook when they get back. Jill, what am I going to do with this banner? Jill. Oh, Shula and Debbie. Hello. Oh, yes. The banner. Good luck, Caroline. Here, uh, I'll put it away. We'll deal with it some other time. She still needs it, though. Yeah. There we are. I'm sure she's going to be fine. Let's hope so. There's something else you can put away. Down beside you, Dad. Hmm? What, what is this ring? Uh, what is it? Oh, it's a cricket bat. Go and put it in the hall cupboard, Phil. Mark's birthday present. I had to remember to hide it before he got home. Go on then, Phil. Uh, oh, yes, right. I shan't need to hide it now. When is... When was his birthday? Sunday. He'd have been 39. He was starting to dread being 40. Look, why don't you leave this to us, dear? You and Debbie go back to Brookfield. <sighs> no. No, come on, let's get cracking. Uh, Debbie, can you and Dad collect cutlery, OK? Uh, yeah, OK. Well, at least we haven't got a great pile of washing up to do, eh, Mum? That's more than you can say for most supper parties. Will you come back with us afterwards? Oh, I don't think so, Mum. Thanks, anyway. Oh, Shula. No, I, I was glad to stay last night. No, you can stay as long as you like. No. No, Mum, this is my home. This is where I want to be. All right? The buds are coming on the hawthorn hedge, you know. Like little green buttons. Springs. So how about getting married in the spring, my darling? Easter, perhaps, when everything's new. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to say it into thy hands. can say is, I want her back. Let me have her back, Lord. 